Hello and welcome back to Speed Demon Painting. Today we are taking a look at how I went about painting these units for the Empire from the Battle for Singapore starter set. These are quite intricate models with a lot of detail on them, but uh, I've actually gone ahead and made a plan to paint a lot of them using what is known as a slap chop style of painting, where you create a strong underlayer and then apply some speed paints on top of those, and then finish off by applying a couple of metallics at uh, certain points. There's also a bit of work on the base to add some uh, flock to it and then some clump foliage, but you do get an easy and striking color scheme this way and I hope it is fairly easy to replicate. I do recommend that you also get some magnifying glasses from a jeweler's headband for instance, because that is really going to help you see all of the small details, but in and of itself they're not too difficult to paint. Now if you want to go around and have some accessibility to all of your models but you still want to use some of the bases for gameplay, I suggest you do the following. You just glue down a single model onto the base in one of the corners so you can actually make out what type of unit the base represents and then you can still paint the other models separately by using one of these clamps for instance. I've cut out these models in such a way that there is a small amount of the sprue left and I got these cheap clamps on uh, Amazon that uh, uh, basically pin the rest of the uh, the unit in place so I can have easy accessibility to all parts of the miniature and still have something to hang on to so I have a steady hand doing so. Now the first step is to apply an all-over coat over a grey primer with black lotus from Vallejo Express Color. This one isn't too strongly tinting and uh, it leaves a lot of uh, details uh, visible on the model as well. Um, now at first the whole model is pretty much darkened um, which gives you great definition in the shadows but it does sort of muddy up the highlights and to fix this I'm going to give the whole model a dry brush of wolf grey by Vallejo Game Color to sort of pick out the outer details. And after that is done we're pretty much left with a model that looks a bit like this and has some definition on the sharp edges of the model but also has some shadows because of the speed paint. Over this I use the Express Color Serif Red, one of the intense paints with a lot of pigmentation, over it. Now if you apply that red over the Black Lotus base coat, you are going to get more of a wine red by the time it has dried up. And with that I basically pick out the helmets, the braces and some of the parts of the shield to get some definition. Next up we're going to be hitting the leathers using Snakebite Leather, a uh, contrast paint by Citadel to pick out the boots, the leather straps and all of those things on the model. And with that you get some extra colour on there. And same deal, the basic shading from Black Lotus and the highlights from the dry brush are going to make it look like this is done and dusted with this. Now the next step is to apply the next colour to it, which is going to be uh, the emerald colour, sort of the jade colour, um, which is applied to a large part of the armour, the shoulder pads, and some of the leg armour that they have, and that is Terradon Turquoise, also a contrast paint by um, Citadel, but I do dilute this about 50-50 with medium to make it a bit less powerful than it is. And with all of these steps, the contrast paints are pretty much applied. This is also the step where I apply some matte varnish to the entire model to offer a bit of protection because contrast and speed paints are great, but they do rub off a bit too easy if you're a bit rough with them and handle them too often. The other reason to apply my matte varnish now is that the next step is going to be the metallics. And the first metal I use is Chainmail by Vallejo Game Color to apply over the gun. That in it is then going to be shaded with some uh, black wash afterwards to create some shading it because the metallic paints are quite opaque and will cover all of the work that you've done beforehand. Now before the wash is applied, this is basically what you end up with. You get some extra shading applied by the wash. Next up are the gold parts, which, uh, for which I've used mostly the bits on the shield. I'm using a base color by Citadel called uh, the Retributor Armor. However, you do have to apply two thin coats of this before you get a nice even coverage. And after that, it gets uh, shaded with some Agrax Earth Earthshade Gloss. I do not think it has enough shading p uh, properties, so I add a touch of willow bark to it to make it slightly darker as well. And once all of those gold colors are applied, that's pretty much the models done, and I can glue them down to their base and start finishing that one. 
Now the bases from Armored Clash do have some texture on it, but the little lips that the models stand on do not. So I fixed this by applying some uh, white sand that they use in bird cages, along with some thin down PVA so I can get some texture onto the feet as well. And I basically apply a coat of this all across the base, which is very easy to paint up because the stand takes diluted paint very, very well. And all you really have to do is finish off the sides of the base with some uh, simple black paint and then apply some flock and clump foliage on the top of there. For this I use Woodland Scenics Fine Turf and their clump foliage to create the bases that you can see here. And that's it for the entire process really. It's a rather straightforward system that leads to some uh, pretty good looking units for a horde army such as the Empire and the process on the vehicles is very similar. The only difference is that I applied some stippling with brown paint and a sponge to it to give it a bit more texture and variation. But I hope to sh show you that in more detail when I review this pretty little thing that has just arrived at my doorstep. I have also received the Sovereign Battle Fleet set for the Crown, and if you want to see those two videos coming up, definitely make sure that you subscribe to the channel for when those are uploaded. And if you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up, that always helps with the YouTube algorithm stuff. That's it for me for today though, I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, bye!